Today we read uh, from chapter 10, from t- verse 12 to 15, but I think I'll be just preaching on verse 12 and 13, and hopefully next week we will talk about uh, verse 14 and 15 and on. And uh, what is the gospel? That's what we want to talk about today. And we, we are trying, from last week, we are trying to learn uh, without any kind of personal personal uh, prejudice, uh, personal interpretation about the gospel. We want to learn and accept the gospel as it is written in the Bible. Right? We, we don't want to distort the definition. We, we don't want to distort the meaning of the gospel. Right? So we, we're going to put, put aside all our thinking, all our reasons, and all our interpretation of the Bible. We're just going to see what the Bible has to say about the gospel. That's what we did last week, and that's what we're going to do today. So today we will continue to talk about the gospel, and my goal is for us to have, uh, first is to have correct understanding of what the gospel is, and second is accept it as it is. And the third change, third change, so third change of our heart and reason according to to what the scripture says about the gospel and the salvation. And lastly, I pray and hope that it would make a real and practical change in your life and in my life as well. So that's the goals that we are heading to, heading to. So let me do a quick review of last Sunday because it is all connected together. I'll, I'll be very brief. A Christian faith includes two important beliefs that I shared last Sunday. You always have to be 100% sure about this. If you want to say, if you want to claim that you're a Christian. First, we believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, for your sin. On that cross, all our sins are washed away. We believe in that. We have to be 100% sure and certain about it. Second, we believe that Jesus, who died on the cross, resurrected from the dead. As he resurrected, he grants all believers eternity. So last Sunday I said, it's always about the cross and the resurrection. When you think about Jesus, when you when you want to say you believe in Jesus, you always have to say, believe in his, his cross and his resurrection. Right? This is very important. And and another thing that we I shared the last Sunday was that the faith we have includes two very important changes. First is change of your heart. Your heart is changed so that you're no longer ashamed of Jesus. And Jesus will never put into put you into shame. That was something that we shared. Second change, uh, second uh, change that we have to go through is because your heart and mind is changed. You're now able to profess your faith in Christ publicly. So the Bible says, confess with your mouth. Confess with your mouth. It means that you have to be able to profess your faith in Christ publicly. These were the two things that we learned last Sunday. And let's see what the Bible has to say about our salvation today. Verse 12, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. So first thing that the scripture tells us today about the gospel is that gospel is provided to us without distinction, without distinction. So the background of this argument was, uh, uh, is because of the ethnic conflict between Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians. So let me talk about Jewish Christians first. And Jewish Christians believed that they were privileged with the law. They thought they were distinctively different from others because they were the descendants of Abraham and David. Today, Pastor Law talked about descendants of David. So they felt, Jewish Christians, they thought They were very privileged. They thought they were different from everyone else. They believed that they were right and everyone else is wrong. 
So the rest of the church and the rest of the world have to follow them. I, I could be a little exaggerating, but, but, but this was their argument, argument of Jewish Christians. But as you all know, that's not how uh, gospel works. The gospel is good news. It is good news that salvation is here for everyone. God never said that he would save only Abraham's descendants. Rather, he said that he would use Abraham's descendants as a channel, as a vessel to save the nations. Uh, let me give you a couple uh, uh, examples from the Old Testament. First, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I will bless those who bless you, and he who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Another one, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. It's, he says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. So Apostle Paul is trying to remind Jewish Christians that God never said that Jews are the right ones. God calls all people into his salvation. So no distinction in gospel shows the fairness of God. God is fair. God is always fair. It shows that God is not God who favors certain nations. He loves each one of us the same. He does not judge us from our ethnic background. He doesn't do that. He does not have prejudice about us. This means, and from this, from the message that there is no distinction in gospel, we have to lose the prejudice we may have against our neighbors. Right? Because God never judges in that way. And it is, uh, Apostle Paul also mentions Greek in specific, and that's why Paul mentioned Jew and Greek. Right? And Greek, they were proud of their cultural prosperity and abundance of his, uh, their philosophy. They were proud of their achievement and their power. And they were proud of their prosperity. They were proud of, proud of what they have. And they perhaps perceived other nations barbaric. So Paul uh, says that there is no distinction in gospel with very specific intention to Jewish Christians and to Greek. God, gospel is not given to sophisticated ones. Gospel is not for the richest. Gospel is not for those who are competent, right? God does not distinguish people by what they have or what they have achieved. He does not discriminate anyone based on their prosperity. God doesn't just save America, right? God saves all nations, right? I'm not trying to be political. It's just, that's what they always say, right? I'm just using the term. So. Um, this means that we shouldn't either. We shouldn't discriminate anyone either. Right? We are not to discriminate people by their wealth, by their achievement. Uh, we have many doctors. So in Namso Church, I have experienced that we have many doctors, many lawyers, many judges, uh, many professors. And I was very surprised because I started ministry in Namso as a youth group. And, you know, I'm just a, this a little young Chengdusa. Uh, all the, all the Chang, small group teachers are like professors and lawyers. And I was like so intimidated by them. Um, but what was surprising to me was that no one... I was, and I was very glad that in church, there was no distinction. They didn't distinguish themselves from others. That was 
that was kind of very impressive to me. They were very humble. They were always ready to serve. Well, they are ready to serve, not were. Right? They're always ready to serve. They don't separate themselves with those who are not you know, that kind of job, right? That was good. And that's exactly what we need. That's exactly what we need. So, gospel, what is gospel? Gospel is no distinction. Right? Gospel doesn't discriminate anyone. Gospel doesn't alienate anyone. It is provided for everyone. Right? Second, the scripture tells us that the gospel makes everyone abundant. It says the Lord will bestow his riches on us. We all know that this riches is not money riches. Right? It means uh, you are going to be abundant spiritually. So what does it mean to be uh, spiritually abundant? So I want to share a couple things on this. The abundance of grace and the gratefulness. So when the gospel works in you, you understand how abundant His grace is. Because when you encounter Jesus, when you encounter the gospel, you suddenly realize how sinful you were. When you meet Jesus, you now suddenly understand that you are doomed and you have no potential to be right. There's no way, you, you find out that there's no way for you to be forgiven unless it's grace. And we see, we learn that Jesus washed all our sins away. So that's the abundant, abundance of His grace. And as you understand His grace, there's abundant gratefulness. There should be abundant gratefulness in your heart, in my heart as well. It's a maximum appreciation all the time. So be thankful for who you are. Right? Be thankful for what God has done for you. Another thing is that it also means being spiritually abundant means that uh, there's abundance of love. It was the love of God that makes Him so merciful. We always have to remember there's no reason for God to save us. Because we are not worthy to be saved. But He did. He was so merciful on us. Why? Because He loves us. He loves us so much. That's why He saved us, right? Because of the truth that Jesus loves you, the universe, now you can first love yourself. Love yourself for who you are. And you are worthy to be loved. Please remember that. Second, love your neighbors. And just as Jesus loves you, you're worthy you are supposed to be loved. You are worthy enough to be loved by people and by Jesus. And so as the same people right beside you. Right? You're, all, you're all supposed to be loved. Right? And lastly, and most importantly, love God. If the gospel works in you. You feel the abundance, abundant love of God. So you love back. We love him back. By what? Whatever. Whatever you do. You love God. By being here? Yes. But you're working? Of course. When you get up, when you go to bed, whatever you do, you love God. So how so how is this gospel applied to us? Let's see verse 13 here. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, if you want to experience this gospel, you have to call on Him. You have to call on Him. It's a very simple condition. If you want to know what the salvation of Jesus Christ is, you have to call out His name. Now, when you call out His name, it, it may seem very simple, but it contains, it, it has very significant meaning. 
I will tell you what it means. It means that you are admitting that you need help. Help from God. By admitting that you need help, you're basically accepting that what you have in your life can't do anything for your salvation and for your eternity. Can't do anything. Right? By admitting that you need help from God, you're accepting that the fact that you are doomed because your sinful nature and all the sins you have committed. And it, it means that you're recognizing that the promise of God is truth. We're saying that you believe in the Word of God, the promise that is given through the Word of God. And you're accepting that the 39 books of the Old Testament and 27 books of the New Testament is the truth without an error. When you say you call, when you call out, call out to Jesus, it means that you are going to trust that the Bible is the ultimate truth. You're believing that the Word of God is the ultimate truth and you are putting the Holy Scripture before your emotion, before your ideal, before your philosophy, before your interpretation of your reality. So how you view yourself is totally changed. And how you view this world is totally changed. Because now you see it through the Word of God. So this is the gospel. This is the good news. And do you like this change? That's the assignment for this week. And I, I pray and I, I, I would like to invite all of you to rejoice this week. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful Sunday and wonderful congregation. Uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share the Word of God with uh, this wonderful uh, gentleman and the ladies. Um, Lord, we learn what gospel is, and you give your gospel, your promise, your good news to us without any kind of prejudice and judgment, or nor uh, any kind of discrimination. You give, you give that to us all, and we want to call out to you. We want to trust you. We want to rely on you. Let us have that faith. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Heavenly Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.